Yeah, I mean, we were somewhere in the 90, 95 range, ideally, but with very little traffic, very little stress with the innings. Um, you know, he, he had not been up seven times all spring. His last outing was cut a little bit short. Um, so I thought he just did an amazing job, just a clinic pitching wise, uh, the way he changed speeds, gave up the leadoff single and then just cruised from there. That's the best I've seen him pitch from a having command of multiple pitches and the way he worked ahead in the count. Next is Rich Dubroff. Hey, uh, Brandon. What were you sent when you were watching Trey, were you, were you sensing how much the day meant to him? He told me in the dugout, yeah, that he felt like it was his uh, debut. And uh, when he hit that double, I said, uh, hey, he finally got a ground ball past somebody just trying to keep it light for, <laughs> for him because I saw how much pressure he was putting on himself and how hard he was trying. And when he grounded into a couple double plays, how mad he was. Uh, but yeah, I just, uh, we had a lot of cool things today. Cesar Valdez has been in the big leagues up and down since 2010. This was his, this was his first time ever on an opening day uh, a, you know, to, to break with a club. Um, I think he's been in professional baseball since 2005. And 16, 17 years later, that makes an opening day roster and, and gets the save. So uh, Mancini, fantastic. I just, I'm sure he was nervous and had a ton of butterflies and and uh, Cesar Valdez with getting the same. It's really cool. Dan Connolly. Hey, Brian, just if you can kind of expand on that on just the overall day. I mean, you, you talked about Mancini. You know what this meant to Means as well. You know, Rio getting a chance to play second base, Mount Castle's first opening day. I mean, when you look at all of that, I mean, was this, you know, we kind of asked you beforehand, you know, before the game, but how special was this day for you? And It was, guys? you know, opening day is always a little bit heavy. There's a, there's a, a lot more that goes goes into the, the first game of the year, just from a pregame standpoint. You have, uh, you're nervous. You have butterflies. It's just a different. I know it's only one of 162, but it's it's a de definitely a different feeling. It's almost a playoff, playoff style feeling before the game, where you're nervous and you're anxious and you want to see what a, what your team's going to look like. Uh, but then you add in all this, all the uh, other things that we had with a guy coming back from cancer, uh, you know, John Means not being able to make an opening day start last year, going through what he did, went through last year, pitching the way he did. Like I said, Valdez, we got a guy that hadn't played second base in his career, playing second base and making multiple plus plus plays defensively. Uh, I just thought we played good baseball. Next is Joe Trezza. Brandon, did, did Rio make it easier for you to today to slot his name in at second base tomorrow or the next day? And also, um, how big was it for Mountcastle to have a moment like that on opening day um, in his first opening day? Yeah, I thought he hit that ball out. Um, but yeah, I mean, to, you know, to contribute the way he did and put the, the really nice swing on a, to give us the Give us the lead and kind of break the ice for us a little bit. Um, yeah, opening day is special for everyone. When it's your first one, it's something you'll remember for the rest of your life. And when, when you produce the way he did, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an incredible moment for him personally and it was huge for us. So, um, yeah, Rio played outstanding at second base. You know, I, that was. You know, we, when we talked about Rio at second a week ago, um, you know, I've always loved Rio's feet, his hands. He plays, he plays the game defensively. He can slow the game down. I knew he was a quarterback in high school. Like, there's all sorts of athleticism for me that he had, things that he has that, that I just wanted to catch the ball and be able to make the routine play, balls he can get to. And, and he did all those things and a little bit more today. Next is John Mioli. Brandon, you were so happy with what John Means did towards the end of last season. Do you see how he pitched today as a continuation of that? Absolutely. You know, it, when you look at the radar gun, it, it looked like he was throttling down a little bit and pitching. 
And for me, that's what he did the last three starts, four starts last year was, was uh, locating a really good fastball already. Uh, but being able to add and subtract with his changeup and not overthrow it and not make it flat, uh, as well as it, continuing to get confidence in his breaking ball. Uh, you know, his stuff plays. It's about pitching ahead in the count. I love the way John Means throws in uh, to be able to get them off of the changeup and all, off of the fastball down in a way where they can't look in one spot, where they can't look up, down, but there's multiple weapons that he can go to, and that's what he's done now. That's what he did today, and that's what he did at the, at the last, uh, last few starts last year. Next is Jerry Coleman. Brandon, I know you've been asked a lot about fans in the stands throughout the spring training. Was today a little bit different because it was a big league park? It was Fenway. It was opening day. And did you notice any Orioles fans or any screams when your team did something right? Because we certainly heard the booing. <laughs> I heard some. Yeah, there were some. There were some Orioles fans uh, scattered in the in the stands. I, I heard it more when we after the. Uh, the handshakes at the end of the game when we were walking back to the dugout, you could see, you could see some Orioles fans up there excited. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, there's way more Boston fans here, obviously. But but when when, when you win and you're coming out back to the dugout after after the, the after shaking hands on the line, usually you can hear the Orioles fans, and and uh, it was definitely a, a nice feeling to have people in the seats. Uh, energy in the ballpark and you know home or road it's it's just a it's so much different when there's people here and um it was a nice change from last year stan charles skipper congratulations on win number one for the season uh all the storylines everybody's been asking you about were very predictable before the game except for one and that's the one that you had something to do with playing rio ruiz at second base I heard you just talk about it, but can you talk a little bit about how you came up with the, the idea? Was it something you and Mike discussed when you picked up Miguel? How did that happen? Yeah, uh, I thought about it about a week and a week ago or so, a week and a half ago, and brought Rio into my office and asked him what he thought and his reaction to my question, uh, I, I felt like from, from his reaction, I felt like, you know what, this is something I might, I'm, I'm gonna try. Just cause he was so excited to do it. He's always asked me to play short and things like that. So um, everybody thinks they can play shortstop that's played an in infield or played shortstop in high school. So he's always mentioned those things to me. And and um, when I asked him if, if, if he would, how he felt about it, and he was super excited to to get out in the field the next day and and go to work with Manzo on it. Um, it put my mind at ease. However, you know, he's only played this is his third game playing second base. I'm not gonna, um, you know, he played well today. I don't want to put I don't want to add more than that. He played very very well today. He picked us up big time, and um, I'm really happy for him. Congrats on doing something, thinking outside the box. Oh, thanks, Dan. Final question is from Todd Karpovich. Hey, Brandon. Um, just going back to Mountcastle, can you just, I just talk a little bit about his poise and patience at the plate and how, how far he's come, he, how much work he did in the minors and to be where he is now and what he can mean to the team this season? Yeah, well, he's a young kid that's played a month in the big leagues and he's hitting fourth in the American League East. And, and, uh, because he's got poise, because he's got confidence, this guy's going to be a really good hitter in this league. And he is a threat when he swings the bat. And when he has a middle of the field approach and understands how to stay on a baseball, which he does the majority of the time, it's, he's, he's very, very dangerous. Um, Cause he's athletic. He's got great hands. He's got huge power. And He's going to have to make adjustments this year, though. It's not going to be. I've seen, you know, seen a lot of young, good, good young players come into the league and and have a first couple, you know, two good months, and and 
then it's then it's tough for a while. That's that's absolutely normal. So I don't want to put too much pressure on him. I think I think that he's going to go have ups and downs this year, like most good young players do. But I really believe in the ability, and I, and I believe in the upside, and I think he's got a chance to be a good player in this league for a long time.